If you don't want your serve to look like this guy, this is the video for you. The true secret to changing your tennis game all starts with video analysis. If you're not doing that, now is the time. You can just use your tablet or your phone. It doesn't matter, you don't have to go out and buy anything fancy. It's all about what you have and using the app Coach's Eye, which is what we use with our VIPs here in Milwaukee. And you can go through and you can analyze yourself and your strokes with the pros. Today we're gonna go over the serve, specifically Djokovic's serve, and compare it to Kevin's serve so that you can get an idea about how to compare yourself in the comfort of your own home. Number one we're gonna talk about is the grip. Okay, so when I'm looking at the grip, I am looking at Kevin's serve that he had, okay? And he had a semi-Western grip. So the biggest thing that we're going to focus on, like I said, number one, is the grip. So if I'm going to tell him to change that, I'm gonna show him and I'm gonna look up Djokovic, okay, and his serve, and I'm going to put Kevin's next to him so that he can really see the difference in his grip versus Djokovic's grip. Okay, so you can see the difference here between the two. You have Kevin at semi-western and Djokovic at continental. You really want to be able to use a continental grip so that you're gonna be able to do the other three parts of the serve and be able to get the pronation at the end um, like we're gonna talk about as well. So number one to look for is grip. Are you using a continental grip? If not, that's the number one change you need to be making to make your serve better. The next benchmark that we're looking for if you at home are comparing your serve with the pros is the racket drop. So we're gonna take a look at Kevin Garlington's serve as opposed to Novak Djokovic. First, Djokovic. So we can see in our Coach's Eye app that Djokovic gets to his trophy position. He's really strong and loaded and then he ends up rotating his shoulder and dropping it behind him to this position. In comparison, Kevin moves his racket here. This is what we like to call a waiter tray position and moves the racket there as the lowest. So I'm going to demonstrate this is as low as, as Kevin goes and this is as low as Novak goes. So Novak is well below his waist and Kevin is at about mid back area. So with these two, when we compare them, what we're really seeing is that Kevin is not getting the range of motion that he really could be getting. And what the racket drop does is as you can increase this range of motion, you're developing the ability to give yourself a runway of energy. So you're gonna be able to accelerate faster, put more pace on the ball, and really ramp up those miles per hour if you can learn how to improve your racket drop. If you want a big, powerful serve or you want tremendous amounts of spin, then moving the racket up towards the ball, up towards contact in the right position is super, super critical. And a moment ago, you heard Kirby talk about the waiter tray position. And what she means by that is how Kevin in his special serve demonstration starts with his racket facing up towards the ceiling as he begins his upward movement towards the point of contact. And so you'll, you'll see that from this position here on up towards the ball, his strings stay facing the same direction the whole way through. There isn't, any, there isn't any loading of the racket head to then be able to unwind it and release it or snap it through the point of contact. So if we contrast that with Djokovic, you'll see that Novak's racket is moving up towards the ball in a position that we call on edge, meaning if you look at his frame, the edge of his racket is moving up first. It's leading the acceleration up towards the ball. Over on the left side, you'll see that Kevin's strings are leading the acceleration up towards the ball. And so he's hitting from what I like to call a pushing position. His hand is already open, it's already facing up towards the ball, and there isn't any release of the racket head 
which Kevin is going to talk about in a minute. So when you record yourself at home, and you look at your serve, what you should be looking for is what leads the acceleration up towards the ball. Is it the edge of the racket or is it the strings of the racket? And what you should be looking for is the edge of the racket to be leading up until about the point that the tip of the racket is pointing back towards the camera. So you see Kevin in that position here. Novak holds it a little bit longer than that. He's a professional athlete and he's swinging with a lot more racket head speed, which makes it a little bit easier to hold that position and then powerfully release it and unwind and snap through the point of contact. So speaking of snapping, Kevin's up next. Oh snap, so it's time to talk about the snap and that means talking about pronation. And specifically pronation is when we've built up all this force and like Ian was talking about taking the racket up on edge and making sure that the path continues to have the maximum amount of racketed speed. So let's take a look at my serve and take a look at Djokovic's serve and see what you can learn by the power of using video. So when we take a look at my serve, as I go up, Ian's already talked about how I'm not going up on edge, but now this leads me to kind of pancaking the ball, not really creating a true snap like you're gonna see with Djokovic. So as you see, the racket goes through and the racket just comes straight down. It's like a, taking a frying pan and hitting something and just coming all the way down. This isn't the most efficient way you can use your racket. Now, when we look at Djokovic, what you're gonna see is he's still on edge here. He makes the racket up to contact and he has this pronation action, which what this means is through contact, the racket's gonna make contact here and to continue the, the racket path, the racket's gonna continue going all the way around where the racket face is actually looking out towards the side here. And you can really see it as he comes through how the racket turns all the way around. What this does is make, it gives Djokovic the ability to continue that flow of power and not stop it like you saw in my video. So it's really important as you go through and you do video analysis that you compare your serve with someone like a Djokovic and see what's the major differences that you can work on. So if you want a great serve just like this and you want to learn how to take your serve to the next level, make sure you check out serveactionplan.com, subscribe and ring that bell.